Welcome to the monthly community coalition meeting. All right. My name is Tracy Parsons. I am the facilitator of this great group. We meet each month, each month, the second Wednesday of the month, 3.30 to 5, here in this room. This is the best meeting that you will attend throughout the month where you gather information, you meet and see people that you've been trying to find that have been avoiding you, and they're here. All right, so thank you everyone for doing that. All right, round of applause. So invariably, someone comes up to me and says, man, we go through those introductions. It takes so long from the meeting, but I'm so glad we did it because I got a chance to see who I was in the room. And hopefully, again, if you haven't met someone, meet someone new today. I always love when we have our students here, so can we give our students another round of applause? <laughs> All right. And welcome new Champaign police trainees. Is that correct? All right. So we're going to start off uh, and talk about the second annual Black Mental Health and Wellness Conference taking place in October. Hello, everyone. Um, so we are hosting our second annual Black Mental Health and Wellness Conference um, October 26th from 8 to 4 p.m. at Parkin College. Uh, last year was a great success. And so we want to continue that. Uh, we want to continue, you know, just pushing that message forward. Um, this, this conference is really about healing and hope and um, continuing to, you know, show that we are doing the work, right? We're, we're, we're out here in the community. Um, we're trying to spread education and information about, you know, mental health and what that does, for, what that does in the black community. So um, we have a video here from Anjanette Young, who is our keynote speaker for this year. So we just want to show this really quick and then talk a little bit about that. I am her um, um, came to life or was always in honor of Breonna Taylor. Um, after I experienced the raid um, with the city of Chicago Police Department in 2019, um, and then Breonna Taylor lost her life in 2020 in a very similar situation. Um, I just really grieved Brianna in a way that made me um, embody who she was. And so I wanted um, a way to honor her life, but also tell the story of what I had experienced. It's been a very Working challenging um, time for me. I am living life often on the -go -round. in tears about and a lot of things. Find a fighter. <laughs> I see it in you, so we can walk it out. Do you think the fact that you are a person, that you are a black woman, do you think that played a role in this? I absolutely think it played a role in it. So not so much that I'm a black woman, but that my skin color is different from all of the men who were in that room that night. I am her, the woman who suffers from domestic violence. I am her for the woman who is sexually trafficked. I am her for the young girl who is being sexually assaulted and no one to turn to. I am her. I'm someone's mother. See me in that frame. See me as your mother, someone who deserves dignity and respect regardless of the situation. For every woman, for every girl who isn't being seen, I see you because I am you. I am her. So that is Anjanette Young. Um, so she's our keynote speaker and her message is really about healing. Right. We all go through traumatic experiences and it's really about growing from those and being able to you know, tell our story. So um, we want to continue that. There will be six CEUs offered. Um, Donna has informed me that for licensed professionals, there are four available for ten dollars. She says that this is a tremendous value. So um, registration will start next Monday. Um, so you will see it on the coalition website. You can register there. There is flyers in the back. Um, that have QR codes. So once Monday comes, you can go ahead and get registered. Um, so we hope to see you there. So last year, we had about 130 community members at the conference. We have phenomenal uh, presenters that are all regionally connected. So we want to invite you out. Registration starts Monday. 
and it is a fantastic conference here in our community, and all are, are welcome. All right, so we have with us today the new executive director of the CU Schools Foundation, Michelle Gonzalez. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me today. Um, as Tracy said, I am Michelle Gonzalez, the new executive director for the CU Schools Foundation. Kelly Hill has moved on um, to the Rocky Mountains and moved to Boulder, and she is now retired. So I, am, I have um, been appointed to be her successor. Very excited to be here. Who am I? Well, here's a little bit about me. I was a third grade teacher for 12 years. I used to work at Booker T. Washington and Southside School, and I stepped away from the classroom to see what else was out there. I ended up getting a job with State Senator, the late honorable and wonderful State Senator Scott Bennett, and I worked in his office for five years from 2015 to 2020. And during that time, I was able to come to these community coalition meetings. I, I came here um, when it used to be a group of 20 people, about 20 people in the police station. It was such a small group, and it has grown to this. So it's really good to be back. I haven't been to a coalition meeting in about four years, so it's really nice to be back. After that, I worked at the Office of Public Engagement at the university where I was able to work with United Way, with Bev over here, in um, helping serve as a liaison between our office and the ECL program. I was also able to um, start a program called iExplore where I brought kids from the K-12 community to campus to see all the different things that happened on campus and um, and just different ways to engage with the, the bridge that relationship between our campus and community. I'm also a very active volunteer in the community. Um, some of the things that I do is I'm a co-chair for the Advancement Council for the Cranert Center of Performing Arts. In fact, I brought the new season booklets back there. Um, if you want to take one with you, they are wonderful and we have a very exciting season coming up. I'm also a um, member of the board for the Community Foundation of Central, uh, the Community Foundation of East Central Illinois. I also serve as a mentor for CU One to One, and I'm part of the Welcome Crew for Experience Champagne. What is the mission for the CU Schools Foundation? It is to invest in an equitable and empowered future for Champaign-Urbana by strengthening the community's commitment to our public schools teachers and students. And what is it that we do exactly? I'm finding that in this role, there are a lot of people out there that have heard of the foundation, but they don't know exactly what we do. We administer teacher grants and scholarships to students. We serve as a liaison between schools and the community. And we recognize and promote teacher achievements. In other words, we are allies and ambassadors for our schools. By a show of hands, how many of you have children in the CU schools? Wonderful. How many of you actually went to the CU, one of the CU schools? Wow. So you are all allies and ambassadors for CU schools. This year, um, we implemented a Five years, we are beginning to implement a five-year strategic plan. We hired Provision Insights, which is a marketing firm, and uh, Andy Miller conducted a survey of over 500 teachers and two focus groups to find out what our community and what our teachers know about what we do at the foundation so that we can better serve them. One thing we, one of the goals that we have for our our, our strategic plan is to increase community engagement. We have a couple of ideas of what we would like to do and um, we are going to be starting to have these conversations once our board starts meeting again um, next month. And one of them is we would like to start a program where we adopt a school where a, a business or an organization or an individual can adopt a school and serve as a support for that school um, throughout the year, whether it be through volunteering or financially or just donating goods. Another idea that we have is to provide teacher wish lists um, to the community so that if there are people in the community that want to 
um, you know, rather than just donating money to the schools where their children go or, or where they might have a connection, then they can just go on the website and purchase um, items that the, that the school might need. We also want to celebrate and promote the success in our schools. Um, every spring, we have what's called the Spring Fling in May at Riggs Beer. And we, we have the Shining Star and Superstar Teacher Awards that we give to um, teachers that have been nominated by their peers. And it's a wonderful way to celebrate. We are really wanting to expand, expand the way we celebrate our teachers. So we're hoping, to have, we're hoping to have another celebration in the fall. We would also like to enhance our grant program. This is something we heard repetitively through from our teachers that they need um, more support in writing grants and having time for grants. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to add another grant cycle so that teachers can apply for grants in September. And then if they miss that cycle, because the beginning of the year is really hard for teachers, um, they can apply for grants in the spring semester as well. And our last goal is we want to make sure we support our teachers to ensure excellence. Very similar to um, the community engagement, uh, we want to make sure that, uh, that the community knows that they can support the teachers directly. Um, we are also going to be able to hire a new assistant executive director, which is really going to expand our outreach and deepen um, the work that we are able to do. So you, as community mem members, how can you help? You can follow our social media page. There we share information about what we are doing and what the schools are doing, and we just celebrate all the work that's being done in our schools. You can share our information about the foundation with people you know who want to somehow invest in our schools. You can attend our 365 Club Breakfast, which is a free breakfast, next week on August 22nd at the I Hotel. I have more information on a slide here later. Or you can nominate a distinguished alumni for our, our event in April. Some of you might have been to it or know about it. Um, some past distinguished alumni that we have from our Champaign-Urbana schools are Chandra Somerville, Herbert Burnett, Sue Gray, Deb Finan, Seth Fine, Bonnie Blair, Nicole Millage, and you right here. Awesome. Anyone else? Any other distinguished alumni in the room? <laughs> OK, thank you for pointing that out. Another thing you can do to help is you can volunteer. So like Jenny, there are very many opportunities to volunteer in the community, in your schools, um, in different capacities. So you can join your PTA, you can spend time in your child's classroom, you can attend special events, or you can chaperone a field trip. That was my favorite way to volunteer. We also have some very organized programs. Like I said, I'm, I mentioned earlier, I am part of the CU 121 Mentoring Program, which is a fantastic program. Uh, if you'd like more information, there's flyers on the back. I read, I count, um, as Jenny mentioned, is a really great program that's going to be starting in September. The deadline to apply is September 6th, so I highly recommend that you uh, consider spending time in a classroom with kindergartners or first graders, um, working with them on their math or reading skills for one hour a week, anywhere from seven to nine, uh, nine weeks in the spring or the fall and the spring semester. Operation Caring Closets is a new program that was started um, through our ECL program as in partnership with Unit 4, Urbana School Districts, United Way, and our foundation where uh, you can purchase uh, different products such as hygiene and grooming goods or um, winter clothes, things that student needs. And each school is going to be distributing them to students this year. This is the information about our breakfast. It's next week. If you are wanting to attend to see what's going to be happening in our schools, you can hear from both our superintendents and you can see what's, uh, what teacher projects are happening in classrooms. It's, it's a really fun, uplifting way to start the school year. So we really hope you can come. 
This is our board. Um, you can see, if you know any of these faces, there's a really wonderful cross-section of leadership in our community from Parkland College to the university to Carl Hospital. She's not in here, but the president of Carl Hospital is, on, is part of our board and just really wonderful people that really care about this community. We are all allies and ambassadors of our schools. As I look across this room and I know the work that you all do and how important it is for our community, um, we are all one and the same and I know you care just as much about CU as we do. So if you wanna ask me any questions, have a conversation, feel free to reach out. This is my information and I thank you for your time. So if you can hear me clap once, if you hear me clap twice, so that's how we get started. So we wanted to get you all a part of what we do. Uh, this is Operation Hope Youth Ambassadors. Uh, we have an Operation Hope program of 108 students. This summer, we selected 23 of those students to be our new youth ambassadors. And these, they're ready to lead Operation Hope into bigger and better things. Um, this summer, they worked on a project, which we call the Peace Pole Project. Um, I believe we have a few slides here to show you all some of the work that they were doing. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what you all are seeing. I just want to take a look at Make sure you got to turn it in. OK. Um, this is their first time, by the way. So you all you know, you be patient with them. This is their first time doing this, so be patient. <laughs> Uh, so this is these are some of the some of the this is how this summer was it, it was hot out there too so they 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 bear with it okay so if you all can grab the polls real quick the students they um, I, I truly believe that a lot of them are going through some trauma okay they have a lot of their peers that have have um, been murdered through a gun violence in the community. And so oftentimes it's hard to get them to talk about the trauma that they go through, but all of them are creative in their own ways. And through the arts, whether it's dancing or singing or even what you see right now is ways that they express how they feel about what's going on in their community. So when, when you all are at the end of the meeting, you guys, make sure you come and take a look at the stuff that they've put on their, their polls. This is the Peace Poll Project. Um, we started this maybe two or three years ago. This year, this year um, we did this. It was a really great donation that we got from United Way to help us get the polls and the paint and things like that. Um, and this summer, they focused on some of the things that's going on with them in their community with youth violence. We have one of the students that didn't come today because he just lost a friend recently. Um, and so, like I said, they're going through a lot, um, but we have these ambassadors that's gonna help lead uh, different things in the community to promote staying away from guns, to promote peace in the community Oftentimes we're talking in front of them as adults. Oftentimes we're doing our things, our, our marches and stuff like that, which is fine. But we need to hear more from the youth. And this is the way, these are ways that they're going to be expressing themselves throughout the community. So we're going to need you all's help. If you all are interested in getting a peace poll put in, in your locations, please let us know. I have brochures out there in the back. We want to fill this community up with these peace polls. And the students that are doing, doing the peace polls are actually students that either have lost someone with gun violence or may have thought about participating in gun violence as well. Um, but when they got to you know, doing some peace poll type of things and making peace with each other, uh, they, thought about it, they thought about it and then they changed their mind, okay? Because you know, having them in the same space with each other Learning how to get along and all of that is important. And through arts, like again, through the arts that we've been doing and through all of the artwork, this is one of the ways that we're using to keep, to teach them to promote peace and to stay out of, the, out of trouble 
and do what they can. Do what they. Did you all have anything you all want to add or say? Some of, I know somebody want to say something. So so I I need to hear at least from one of them. Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Glenn. I'm in this program, Operation Hope. And during this program, uh, I've built a lot of confidence and more stuff like that. That's why I'm up here speaking now. I used to be able, not be able to speak like this in front of a large group of people, stuff like that. So thank you all. Okay, so make sure you all, before you leave, take a look at the polls because they're, they're very, it's some very creative artwork on there. We got hands on there. We have names of the students. Um, we got messaging. This is a lot of good messaging that they're, they're, they, they've came up with. And when we first did the project, we uh, had a um, artist that came in to teach them how to do some of the stuff. But I said, man, I'm not going to get no artist this year. They, they, they are so creative. So they came up with the, their own designs, uh, the color schemes, all of that is all of them. We have, I think, four more polls that we did, and we want to do some more of this through the school year. Um, and so, um, and we just want to get them put up around here so that people can see. You know, we, they, get, they're, they're, they want peace too. They don't, they don't want to continue to live the, the life that they're living through the trauma. And once again, this is a way that they're, they're, they're showing how to be, uh, to deal with the trauma and how it's kind of therapeutic actually. When we sit back and we do the polls, we talk about all of the different things that's going on. And while we're talking, they're drawing, they're coloring, we're painting. They learn about paint. They learn about the different types of paint. They learn about the different types of woods. Um, and so it was just, it's just a great experience. And so I, I'm proud of you all, as, as you all know, as we continue to do better things with Operation Hope. We thank you all for coming here, and we thank you all for listening to us. All right, we can, we can do a little better than that, right? Let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> All right, so at this time, we want to bring up uh, Vision to Succeed to talk about the really important work that they're doing in the community and uh, have some really important conversation here for a few moments as we kick off our school year, continue to look at how we strengthen our engagement activities with our youth. And so Banyo BK Karoma is here from Vision to Succeed. So are you going to go up there first? We'll have you sit here, and I'll join you guys in a second. But go ahead, Banjo. You are on. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Banjo Karoma. Uh, a lot of people know me in the community as BK. I am the uh, founder and director of Vision to Succeed. And uh, well, the reason I'm here today is to uh, work with you guys to help our youth to create a vision for them to succeed. Um, and uh, I plan on uh, working with you guys so we can achieve our goal. All right, so um, today is uh, back to school time, right? Back to school support presentation. So together we can create a thriving environment for our youth. Today we'll explore how we can unite as a community to support our children's success throughout the school year. So what does that look like? Um, since it's about community, uh, as you see the, today, youth are always, you see them walking to school. Uh, you know, it's, 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 a transition is hard, not just for youth, but for adults as well. So any support we can do to encourage our youth, it'll help them transition a lot easier. You know, even if you see uh, youth walking down the street, sometimes just congratulate them, you know, give them a high five, you know, uh, uh, encourage our pour into them. That makes a big difference. Supporting students through transitions. Uh, as I said, transitions are never easy. Transitions are tough, but we can make them smoother. Whether it's starting the school year, adjusting after break, or preparing for the next step, our role is to provide a steady support system. And uh, let's work together to help our students find their, their rhythm, right, and feel secure every step of the way. You know, so I, I, on the way here, I was talking to uh, one of my, my mentees uh, about the first day of school, and, you know, I said, how'd it go? And he said, it has some ups and some downs, right? And we talked about it. And... Uh, you know, uh, you know, just, just through those conversations, that's how we, we help support our youth. 
Community programming, it takes a village, right? Uh, after school programs, sports, and the community activities are more than just hobbies. They are safe spaces for growth. Let's connect our kids with programs that inspire, support, and challenge them to be their best selves. Uh, there's plenty of resources in this community. Uh, I'm seeing some in here, and I'm looking forward to collaborating with you guys. And uh, you know, uh, uh, we know that um, um, a lot of uh, our community members aren't even aware of all the rich resources there are in the community. So the more we can spread awareness of, of what's available out there, the more that we can get to connect uh, the, the the ones that we need that have the, the biggest need to the the service to best serve them and their families. Building strong relationships. Relationships are at the heart of our community, right? Uh, by building strong bonds with our youth, we create trust and open communication. Let's also build partnerships amongst parents, teachers, and community members to support each other and our students. You know, um, I was uh, with Tracy a couple weeks ago at uh, the, the, the gun violence response meeting in Garden Hills. And, you know, uh, one of the things uh, that, uh, that was, was, was made adamant is that we need more connections with uh, community members and people in government and also your great police force. And uh, I was actually blown away just hearing some of the great stories of some of the police officers that actually de-escalated situations with, with uh, some youth that had mental health disabilities instead of just picking out a gun and, and taking their life. So I actually want to congratulate our police force for the training that they're doing. And, you know, stuff like that, that's, that's, that's how we, we work better as a community, you know, because um, it's, not, it's not a myth. Uh, a lot of the people in our community, we have a distrust for the police, right? So how can we build that bridge? Uh, I, I, every time, chance I get, I'm always going to promote. And it's any, anytime I hear something good that the police are doing, I'm going to share it. And we need, we need all of us to do that as a community. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we need each other, the police and the community and the government, right? Accountability and support. I love that word, accountability. Uh, we're in this together. Uh, accountability isn't just about keeping an eye on our kids. It's about showing them we care. By regularly checking in on their academic progress and well-being, we can offer the guidance and support they need to thrive. So uh, at that same community meeting, one of the biggest things is that uh, that we, we kept hearing was that we need more accountability. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a, I'm a very uh, uh, results-driven person. I'm all about accountability. I don't like blaming the system, blaming this. I'm about, like, this is what, what we are. What can we do to solve it? What action can I do? What can I do to uh, impact my community? What can we do, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't take that victim mindset. I'm all about what can we do? Let's take action, right? So accountability, a lot of the community members say, you know, we need to hold ourselves accountable, and that's the biggest truth. If we want to solve this problem of violence and gun violence, it's not going to come from the outside. It's going to come from the inside, right? starting in our households, our families, our community members. So we need to start holding ourselves accountable. How do we do that? It starts with uh, uh, supporting our youth. And um, so what else, the reason uh, it's important to have more connection with our youth is because if our youth start seeing family members and people that they see in the, in the neighborhood, you know, you really understand that they're less likely to commit crimes if they recognize someone and someone recognizes them. A lot of times, if they don't feel like they're connected to the community or no one knows them, they're more likely to be incentivized to commit crimes. So how do we curve that? But, but starts, starts with the community members, right? Uh, showing that you support them, showing that, that uh, we're, we're here, we love you, and that, that we're going to hold you accountable, but we're also going to support you. Accountability is not just um, calling them out when they're doing wrong, but also raising them up when they're doing something right. I'm big on that. So that being said, monitoring cell phone use. Now, now, now this, see this slide right here? I was going to make this number one. All, all, everyone who's in education and uh, work with youth or have any youth in your lives, you already know that cell phone, that's, that's a big barrier to education, right? It's all, we're about getting back to school. Monitoring cell phone uses. Technology is a powerful tool. Let's use it wisely. We can guide our children to make smart choices online by setting boundaries and staying informed. Together, we'll ensure that cell phones enhance their learning and social lives, not distract or harm them. So here's what I got to say about this. It's 2024. Cell phones aren't going anywhere, right? So instead of us uh, blaming them, saying that the worst thing, let, let's use them uh, and guide our youth uh, sh to show them how to use them constructively, right? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a man of faith, and I believe that God gave us free will. So technology is just a tool. Cell phone's a tool. You can use it for destruction, or you can use it for construction. So let's encourage our youth 
to use their, their, the power of this new technology, right? Let's embrace it together and guide them together because that's what they need, guidance from us, right? Um, I don't even need a slide for this. Uh, so so what your peers, uh, he's a, he has a little stage fright, but I'm going to put him on the spot. You know, we talk a lot about this uh, cell phone usage, and, and when it's just me and him, he opens up. Some of my youth open up, and they share that uh, uh, they're not getting a lot of sleep at night. Why, why do you guys think they're not getting a lot of sleep at night? You guys look like some smart people in the room. They're on their cell phone, right? So if we, so that right there is going to be a barrier for them getting education. Because if they're tired all day because they're up all night on their cell phone, how can we expect them to perform in the classroom, right? Makes sense. So we encourage parents to, you know, there's a lot of new technologies. There's, there's apps that, that will shut off the phone at a certain time, right? So we need to encourage uh, parents to access these new tools that, that will empower them as a parental monitor for their youth, especially with cell phone usage, right? Um, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but I, I did have a, a student that told me, uh, he said he was tracking his own cell phone usage. How many hours uh, in, within a 24-hour span do you think he was on a cell phone? Random guess. That's smart. 18 hours. You know, there's, uh, there's only 24 hours in a day. So I said, I said what'd you do with the four hours? Like, like I know you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta eat and you gotta, you gotta you get, you do other things, right? So that means that most of the time they're on their phone, right? So we have to, if, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be silly and ignorant if we feel that uh, the, a, a child can monitor themselves on a phone. Adults can't even monitor themselves on phone, let, let alone children, right? So let's, not, let's help and support them and not just put all that uh, pressure on them to self-regulate their cell phone usage. Assessing mental health. There's a lot of people here in the mental health field, right? Every question is a step toward understanding. Daily conversations about our children's feelings can make a big difference. By asking the right questions and listening with empathy, we can uncover any hidden struggles and address them before they grow. Um, so, you know, we all have uh, connections with youth. And um, when I talk about connection, we all know somebody who's got a child. And that comes back to the, the community support. You might not have a child. But you all, everybody has a nephew or niece, or you have a neighbor who, who has a child, right? So don't make an excuse. That's not my kid. Talk to the kid. I encourage them, right? It starts with us. And then just ask the, ask the question. So because, you know, there's a lot of our youth, um, there's a lot of data now. Um, one of the reasons is that they're showing more antisocial behaviors because they're in the cell phone all the time. They don't know how to have a, a regular conversation. I mean, you guys know, just look, look, at, look at any youth or go to a family gathering. What are the youth doing? They're on their phones texting, right? So we have to uh, try to teach that, pull them out of the cell phone, teach them have, how to have a real conversation, and ask them real questions. You know, how are you feeling? How, what's going on in school? What subjects are, are, are you doing great in? Great. What subjects are you struggling in? Oh, really? How can we fix that? And just supporting them. Because, you know, a lot of our youth, they're not going to tell us. A lot of them are suffering with depression and, uh, and other antisocial behaviors. And uh, especially a lot of the males, uh, we, we like to hold things in. So especially for, for if you have a male student and female students, obviously, but particularly males, we definitely want to pull them out of their, their comfort zone and, and get them to share their emotions, right? Young men and, and adult males. All right, so uh, we're, that's getting to the end of it. Uh, Vision to Succeed. We, are, we start off primarily as a male mentoring program. Uh, we empower our youth one connection at a time, because it's all about connection. And then um, you will be seeing now uh, we're merging more into a, a positive media company. Our slogan is media with a purpose. Now, like I said, I'm a very solution-oriented person, right? So if we already know what the problem is, is that our, our youth are being influenced by what? Social media, right? They're on their cell phones. So I'll give you an example. I can talk to my youth for, for three hours on Friday night, send him home. As soon as he goes home, he turns on his phone and, and it says, who's this, who's his role model? The latest new rapper that tells him to, to kill, shoot, destroy himself, right? So how can, how can we compete with that? The only way we can compete with that is to be right there on their phone. So we offer them an alternative to, uh, we provide educational media, but not only that, we actually wanna empower them to be producers and not just consumers. So we teach them, hey, you can produce your own content. You don't have to take accept that trash that the, that, that the media, that the mass entertainment industry is giving you. You know, there's a, there's a brother named Sean here. Uh, he always brings up a great point. You know, uh, we, we, talk, we know that these entertainment companies don't care about our youth. They're making money off of them, right? So we, uh, instead of, you know, we can point the fingers at them, but they're not going to change because it's, it's an entertainment business. They're making money. 
How can we attack that? From the inside out. We got to put out our own positive media that we want them to consume, right? And it, the more we engage them, the more they're going to teach each other. I know this for a fact. All right, uh, youth le leadership initiatives. Uh, leadership starts with opportunity. Our program, we're very big on leadership development. Um, we teach our youth to be leaders and not followers, right? Because we know that being a follower, it's, it's, you, fo it's, you follow your way to the path of destruction. So we kind of gang recruitment and all type of uh, other uh, negative influences. And we, 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 we supplement that with positive uh, examples. I always talk about males because males, uh, for those of you who are in, in psychology or mental health, um, the way that the male brain works, we, 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 we learn by model behavior. So that's why it's important to have a positive male role model in, in the youth's life, not just for uh, young male boys, but also girls as well, right? And we know that's one of the problems in our community is a lot of fatherlessness, right? So we can't solve all the problems, but we can do our part. And together as a community, we can, we can make our community better. All right, call to action. Together we can make a difference. Let's continue to support, uplift, and connect with each other and our youth. Your involvement, partnership, and care are what make our community strong. We invite you to join us in our mission because together we can all achieve great things as a community. That's all. Thank you. All right, let's give Banner a round of applause. So maybe you just stay, if you just stay there. Yeah. Right there, you gonna join us here? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, so, <laughs> cell phone uses, right? Hey, right. how about we put it down for a second? Thank you, thank you, sir. So first, let me say thank you for coming and being here today. I asked him if he was gonna speak, and he said absolutely not, right? <laughs> so, but I am proud of you, and thank you for being here today. Uh, talk to us about vision to succeed, where that comes from, how'd you create your organization, why? Um, the reason we named our organization Vision to Succeed is because, like I said, I'm a man of faith. And in the Bible, it says that where there is not faith, I'm sorry, I apologize, where it says where there's no vision, the people will perish. So I feel like it's our job to provide, uh, not only provide, but help guide our youth to find a vision for their lives. I, I honestly believe that if a youth has a vision for their life, they're less likely to go out and kill their brother, commit crimes. Because one of the biggest things we know is, is a lot of our youth feel like they have nothing to lose, right? A lot of our youth feel like, like, they, they, like they're untouchable, right? So we, we, we empower them by letting them know, like, hey, first of all, you, you are special, you have a future, and you're the future of our country. And when they believe that, then they're more likely to make more healthier long-term decisions because we're all about long-term decisions, not short-term decisions, right? Uh, so that's why uh, we call ourselves Vision to Succeed. You've been doing some... Um out in the wilderness and talk to us about the openness and what you're doing out with, with young men and in the part of the work you're doing. Absolutely. So um, uh, we work, we are, our headquarters are, are at the Ujima Retreat Center. It's a nature retreat center in Urbana. Um, and uh, what we do is we, we like to take our youth, not just off, off their phones, but actually put them out in nature. And so they can reconnect with not only with themselves, but the world around them, nature, and hopefully with themselves, right? So we, uh, uh, one big component is uh, we, we are heavily involved in teaching them new life skills, male bonding. So what we do is we, we, we do camps. And one of our most popular programs is something called Manhood Training Camp. And what we do is we teach the young men what it is to be a real man, uh, 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 not just a real man, but a man of honor, integrity, uh, a man of righteousness. Uh, and we counter what they, the common belief that they see on their social media of being a man is someone who has a lot of women, uh, a, a criminal. So we, we, we counter that and we, we provide them a different um, a model behavior uh, for them to follow. So we just provide, show them a different way of life, show them different options. Because one of, the, one of the problems we know is that a lot of our youth feel like they don't have a lot of options. A lot of our youth, uh, especially, and, and the key is you want to get them as young as possible. The sweet age that, that science is showing is about 12 years old. Because around 12 years old, the youth is then trying to figure out what persona they're, they're going to put on. I call it changing masks, so, right? So uh, unfortunately for a lot of our male youth, black youth, they, they only have one or two uh, masks to choose from. It's either a rapper or, or a gangbanger. So we're here to show them different ways. No, you can be an engineer. You can be an artist, like these guys over there. You can be uh, anything you want to be. So uh, until they see themselves in, in potentially a different life or a different future, it's very hard to, to counter their, their um, self-destructive behaviors and self-destructive beliefs. So we want to counter self-destructive beliefs with uplifting beliefs, self-confidence, self-esteem, 
We let them know that, that they're royalty, right? And uh, that they have a future. So final question. <clears throat> we often talk about how do we engage with our students, with our young men. How do you approach engagement? You know, Rizez, shy, quiet, I can tell, right? So how do you, what, what was that? You say, I'm not shy. Tell him. Speak. You got a, got a good voice. Tell him I ain't shy. It's okay. So, so disclaimer, he told me he asked for stage fright. I told him, it's okay. I got your back. And, uh, you know, even, I'll tell you what. Even you coming up here, that's a big step. How many people are willing to come off stage? Yeah. Right? You're, you're, one, you're one on one. He, he, he mumbled that he was forced. Right? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. You make you make me look 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 like I'm I'm some so kind of dictator. About, yeah, talk about engagement, engagement. But but you know what? Even this, like, uh, this is an authentic conversation. We're gonna talk about this later. Uh, this I could brag on my youth all the time. It's all about connection. Um, um, they they all have personalities. They have they they, they have humor. Um, you know, it's not all, all just education with us. Sometimes the one of the biggest things is especially with a lot of our black youth. Uh, they don't get the opportunity to just be a kid because unfortunately when you're a black youth you have to grow up very fast You have a lot of pressure. Uh, you want a lot of my, uh, my meals if they come from a single a fa a Mother home they want to take that burden of their father not being there and they want to be the man of the house So that puts pressure on them. I gotta go make this money. How can I make this money? I gotta make it fast I see my mama struggling, right? So we teach them. Hey, the best way you can, you can help your mama is by taking care of yourself Become the, the, the best version of yourself being a man of, of, of principles integrity and then educate yourself. That's the best way you can help your mom out. Because guess what? If you take shortcuts and, and you get locked up and she has to go talk to the judge or some people at the DA's office, that's going to hurt her. And you want to help her, not hurt her, right? So uh, we basically uh, want to allow them to be kids. And uh, one of the ways we do that, we, we take them out. We do different activities. I, I've taken the U of I basketball games. But we want to take them, show them different things that, that they may, might not be able to experience. And hopefully, while we're doing that, we're pouring into them, we're mentoring them, we're educating them, we're, we're, we're modeling positive behavior that we want them to see. And we call them out, too. If there's behaviors or things that we don't like, we call them out. And if there's things that we, we see that, that we like, we, up, we praise them and we uplift them. We, we, get, we encourage that behavior that we want to see. All right, it's Banyo BK Karoma, Vision to Succeed. Rizea is here joining us. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Oh, and uh, we have uh, also, before I forget, uh, we have um, uh, materials for you guys, uh, some tips for parents and community members on how you can support school-age youth. Uh, we have these in the back. All right. Vision to succeed. Thank you. That's Brown. All right. So we're going to have our law enforcement leadership come up at this time. Set my stuff here. I don't want to knock anything over. All right. Pull this out of here. Uh, first of all, before I get started, I just want to commend uh, people like Sheldon and BK that are, uh, uh, you know, really influencing the youth. Uh, first thing that caught my eye when I walked in were the peace polls, and uh, Tracy was explaining them to me. So I think that's really a great thing, uh, eye catching, and uh, it's it's a nice thing for the community. So thank you to the youth that showed up here today as well. Uh, keeping on the, th oh, by the way, <laughs> I'm Jeff Kuhn, Champaign Police Deputy Chief. Um, Chief Tyler's at his annual military training. He'll be back Monday. So uh, he should be here next month, hopefully. But uh, Isaiah, I'm with you, a little stage fright. No, I'm kidding. Um, so keeping on the theme of back to school, um, with students returning, Champaign Police are focusing on traffic enforcement in school zones. Um, Two main things, slow down, and I know we talked about cell phones already, but staying off the cell phones is a extremely important, distracting behavior. We don't need that, especially in a school zone. Just as a reminder, um, in the school zone, you have to yield to any children or adults um, that are crossing in the crosswalk area. Stop and wait for a stop school bus. That's a big one. That's loading or unloading, and reduce your speed up to 20 miles or to 20 miles an hour. Um, speeding in a school zone can result in a $100 or $150 fine for the first offense, $300 and upwards for subsequent offenses. Trust me, we don't want to have to write anybody tickets for those. Um, 
And if a motorist causes great bodily injury uh, to a child or a crossing guard uh, in a school zone, then obviously they can go to jail and be fined up to $25,000. So we don't want any of that. Um, we will be spending a lot of time in the school zones in the coming weeks. That's just part of what we do beforehand and after school as well. So please spread the word. Um, there's nothing uh, worse than, than hearing uh, an accident come out in those areas or God forbid a, a child getting injured. So um, being here, I need to talk about the shootings from last month in July. Um, we had 15 incidents of gunfire in Champaign, which could be shots fired, um, resulting in property damage, or we had six people that are actually injured by gunfire and unfortunately two homicides. Um, I should say that these incidents do not reflect who we are as a community. Um, or the effort we've all put into the gun violence reduction uh, blueprint. Uh, I know it's uh, BK alluded to it earlier about the neighborhood meetings that we've had. I was pleased to see Sean, BK, Tracy, Miss Weatherall, uh, a lot of faces out there at these meetings. Um, basically, we get together and um, in conjunction with the uh, Equity Engagement Department um, to respond to these incidents with trauma informed services shared opportunity for our community to connect with other resources as well i don't know if any of you had the chance to see we had a, a press conference on july 28th um, in response to the, the homicides and uh, i was really pleased to see our blueprint partners that turned out for that um, they're really doing a great service to our community without question they're taking care of the victims their families uh, they provide programming, trauma-informed care to the community and helping to address the root causes of violence in their efforts. So I, I tip my hat to you for that. Um, I will say that one initiative that Chief Tyler has brought that I, I, as a command staff personnel, I'm really pleased about is he's brought our blueprint partners into our monthly all-command meetings, which is sergeant and up. So basically our leadership within the agency allowed them to provide presentations, uh, let, let our uh, personnel know what their capabilities are, put a name to the face, which is very important, kind of like what Tracy talked about earlier with the introductions. Um, it's been very beneficial, I know, to our, our department as a whole. So um, I, I'm always sure to tell Chief Tyler that when I see him, I, he, he d has some innovative approaches and I, I definitely enjoy that. But um, one thing I will say about all those incidents I mentioned earlier is that we're going to continue to ask the community for assistance, identifying those responsible for this reckless behavior, dangerous behavior. Um, as a reminder, anybody with information about gun crime, contact the Champaign Police Department at 217-351-4545. When we did introductions, I mentioned I'm the law enforcement coordinator for Champaign County Crime Stoppers. Before me, Chief Daniels was the law enforcement coordinator. Uh, it is anonymous, I can assure you, and we take great lengths to, uh, to make sure that we maintain people's anonymity, but that is an option that's out there. Uh, P3 Tips mobile app, 217-373-TIPS, you can call. Uh, we also have our, our website at um, 373tips.org, and then obviously if it results in an arrest, we, we can pay out up to $5,000 if it's for homicide, $2,500 for Gun, illegal gun bounty reward program and then up to a thousand dollars for other cases so i encourage you especially if anonymity is important talk to people please use the program um, on a more positive note i want to talk a little bit about the uh, community police academy that's coming up uh, champaign police are joining with the other law enforcement agencies and the police training institute um, I should say that the cutoff is August 19th. It's coming up. We'd really like to boost those applications. So Joe Lamberson is here. Please flag him down and talk to him. Um, basically, it's a good way to kind of get a little behind the scenes look at what we do and some of the principles that guide our work. Uh, the classes are on Wednesday nights from 6 to 9 p.m. And they start on September 11th and they run through November 6th. You must be 18 uh, to join the academy. Um, like I said before, we do have a few applications, but we really want to drive that number up. So um, that's all I have for you now. I'll turn it over to Sheriff Harmon. Good afternoon, everyone. Champaign County Sheriff Dustin Harmon. Um, 
First off, I was really excited to see Anthony here. He's one of our uh, law enforcement explorers. I don't want to call him out, um, but it's always exciting whenever uh, we see youth who are engaged in law enforcement, and we don't have a lot of law enforcement explorers at the sheriff's office. And so if you know anyone, uh, I believe 15 to 20 years old, they don't have to be interested in law enforcement, but generally we'll see students who are interested in law enforcement. We uh, pair up with the Champaign Police Department's Explore program a lot, and it's uh, kind of community building, team building, those types of things. And so you can always get a hold of me if you have anybody who you think may be interested. Um, and as an introvert myself, I respect the, the uh, young uh, men and women who can get up here and uh, represent their causes. And this young man right here, too, I, I felt his pain the entire time he was up here, right? Um, so, so I feel you. Um, I don't know if you're branching out to Urbana with the Peace Polls, but if you are, I would love to have one in front of the Sheriff's Office. So make sure you get a hold of me and uh, we can work something out. Um, so I'll kind of echo what Jeff said. It is today was the first day of school for a lot of our schools out in the county, and my deputies are out making sure that the kids get uh, where they're going safely. We all know kids, they do unexpected things, right? And so we're trying to slow down motorists and so we don't have any kind of accidents. Um, I did want to highlight uh, this uh, Monday, I believe it was, I announced our officers of the year for the sheriff's office. So Deputy Kyle Selleck, who is our canine officer, uh, he's the deputy of the year, him and his canine Pongo. Um, we have Officer Nicole Johnson, who was our correctional officer of the year, and we have Officer Dylan Bullard who was our court security officer of the year. And so if you follow us on Facebook, you know this already. If you don't, I would encourage you to follow us on Facebook and kind of keep up with what the sheriff's office is doing. Here uh, in the last couple of weeks, we had a cone with a cop down at the Sydney Dairy Barn, um, kind of a, an off version of coffee with a cop that we do several times throughout the year. And in September, we'll do a coffee with a cop, either a Muhammad or Savoy again. And so following us on Facebook is a great way to keep up with some of the things that the sheriff's office is doing. We have had uh, zero shooting incidents in the last month since uh, Chief Deputy was Bar Barrett was here representing me last month. We have had zero shooting incidents. We have had, yes, excellent. Um, the summers, just like every law enforcement agency, summers are generally busier for us than when it starts getting colder. And so that's great. We have six for the year. Um, and by this time last year, we had nine. We were down a little bit in 2022, but by this time in 2021, we had 12. And so, you know, we're hovering about that mark. But the fact that we haven't had any, I believe, in the last two months at the sheriff's office um, is definitely speaking to the things that we all in the community are doing to try to reduce this and keep our community members safe. So uh, I believe that's all I have. I will turn it over to Chief Daniels to talk about Parkland. Thank you. Thank you. Troy Daniels, Parkland College Police Department. Uh, first thing I want to say is that this Sunday is the last day you can register for classes at Parkland uh, with classes starting next Monday. So if you need a place to start, young people over there that might be thinking about school or what's next, if you need anything at all to think of what to do after high school, go to Parkland. We've got counselors that can help you. There are programs that are set up to pay you money to go to school, pay you while you're going to school. It's called SWIFT. So go to Parkland if you need any help with that. This is tentative, October 26th, tentatively, hopefully we will have trunk or treat again at Parkland College, hopefully at the next community coalition, we'll be able to uh, uh, give you more information on that, that'd be in the afternoon. Within the last couple of weeks, the University of Illinois has taken the lead in helping train us on civil unrest training, helping all of our officers learn how to work together so that when uh, people are using their First Amendment rights to have a protest or to speak out, that we can keep them safe as well as the people around them and property safe. So uh, it was very valuable training, thanks to the University of Illinois Police Department for their leadership in that. The Northwestern School of Staff and Command is going to be happening at Parkland starting in September through January. So sergeants, lieutenants, deputy chiefs throughout this area will be going to a premier uh, leadership training academy at Parkland specifically designed for police. Uh, there'll be two weeks on and two weeks off. It's 10 weeks of training all together to make them the most professional command officers that we possibly can. That's happening at Parkland. Um, 
there's a sweet spot right now to apply for Parkland for the police department as an officer, telecommunicator, part-time or full-time. So now's the time if your friends or family uh, want to apply, now's the time to do it. October 5th, Saturday, we are going to have a Faith and Blue event uh, where we seek to build and strengthen relationships between police officers and their community. We know how important faith-based organizations are. All the local police departments are taking part in this. Once again, the University of Illinois through Dementro Debo Powell is, uh, is taking a leadership and helping pull this together. Thank you, Debo, for your work on that. Um, that will be in the afternoon also from 1 to 4 p.m. And finally, uh, CU Community Fest, kind of like the upgraded uh, National Night Out, is happening on Tuesday, August 27th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on the South Quad. I hear rumors that uh, the sheriff's going to be in a dunk tank out there. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but he doesn't seem to know that yet. But uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on, a lot of community organizations out there. Bring the family and, and kids out. It'll be a fun, fun time. A uh, couple thoughts. Also, congratulations to the three officers that are here today. Um, what's that? <laughs> you all right. They are. Oh, yeah, yeah. We won't try to recruit you, but... Um, you are getting ready to start the greatest job on the planet. You just don't know it yet. You think it, but I trust you. Trust me, it's the greatest job out there. You will learn that the more you develop relationships with the people in this room, the more successful you will be as a police officer. Uh, to the youth, we also would like those polls at Parkland College at some time also. So thank you all for coming here today. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you. We're gonna do, uh, we have a little time here, so I need you guys to take the mics around. <laughs> so Katie's not first on our list. So we uh, love to be able to have information sharing. There's a lot of really great things happening. So always remember if you come, bring your flyers for the back table, and then hopefully in some of the meetings, I'll get a chance to do some information sharing. So Bud's gonna start us off talking about um, all right, so this is our second annual, right? Yep. Right. Okay, yeah, I'm from the state's attorney's office, in case you forgot. Uh, I'm here to remind and inform everyone about the second annual Scott Bennett Family Resources Day. I think most people in this room probably remember the late Senator uh, Scott Bennett, uh, especially for his kindness and action in our community. Uh, and this was named uh, in honor of him. Uh, but most importantly is what the actual event is. It's happening a week from this Friday, August 23rd. It's going to be at Lincoln Square Mall from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, there are flyers on the back table. I'd encourage you to pick one up. Um, we're really in, in the mode of trying to get, uh, get media and get people to attend the event. Uh, however, if your organization was interested and didn't quite hit the deadline for having a table, uh, still talk to me. We're, we're full, but we're squeezing some people in and having them share a table. So you can still slip me a card and, and we'll figure out something that we can do. What the event is, like BK mentioned and others have mentioned, there's so many great resources in our community, uh, but one of the obstacles is just letting people know what they are. Uh, and also, there are people that need help but don't even know what questions to ask. So this is an event where we've got 40 tables at Lincoln Square Mall. They're all out in the open. It's very informal. People can just walk in and ask questions of any of these uh, um, agencies and organizations that are in attendance. And I just want to run through, I'll say these really quickly, but. Uh, really quickly. Really, really quickly. Uh, all right. <laughs> some attendees, Bright Point, CASA, uh, County Circuit Clerk, State's Attorney's Office, Veterans Assistance, uh, Public Health Dr District, Resource Service, uh, Chris Healthy Age and Aging, Crisis Nursery, Cunningham Children's Homes, Disability Resource, Dispute Resolution Institute, Family Advocacy, ID, HFS, Land of Lincoln Legal Aid, it's a big list. So it's an all-star list. Grab a uh, flyer from the back and please show up. It's a week from Friday, 10 to 3 uh, at Lincoln Square Mall. Thank you. All right. so, so the state's attorney. 
Awesome. State's attorney did call me last night and said that we need people at the resource fair. It's one thing to have the booths, but we need bodies there. So please let people know about the resource fair. Hi, everybody. Housing Authority will actually be at that event, so that's a perfect segue. Um, but I'm just announcing today that as of next Monday, starting at 12.01 a.m. until next Friday until 11.59 p.m., the Housing Choice Voucher Program waiting list, I don't know if that one's too many things, it will be opening. So Monday through Friday next week, Housing Choice Voucher Program waiting list is opening. Um, if anybody needs an accommodation or any assistance, our office on Market Street, there are computers on site, there are staff available that can help. Um, there's a phone number to call, but the staff that I would refer people to is Charles Jackson. So um, if need be, just call the phone number provided and ask for Charles. He's the intake coordinator, but that's all I got. So thank you. All right. Did someone make it from Rosecrans? Okay. <laughs> we'll get to you, Manny. Good afternoon. My name is Jessica. I'm the inpatient unit coordinator at Rosecrans. And my name is Alicia Fenton Stackpole. I am the outpatient substance um, supervisor for Champaign over at Walnut Street and Danville. And at the end of this month, on um, Thursday, August 29th, we're having our overdose awareness um, walk where our clients have been working on making luminaries. That's actually what they did earlier today to um, honor and remember those that have been lost to overdose. Um, as many are familiar here, the opioid uh, um, epidemic has probably touched everyone um, in this room in one way or another. It's a beautiful event where we invite the community members to come at 9 p.m. to walk through the different um, candlelit luminaries um, and take a moment to really honor those who have lost their lives to addiction. All right, thank you. Uh, folks from Dispute, go back over here, Dispute Resolution folks. Okay, I'm going to make everybody turn around to face me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, Rose and I are with the Dispute Resolution Institute, and we just wanted to make you um, aware of a couple of events that we have going on. Um, so what we do, we, we offer free mediation services. So we host mediations. Um, we also work with meeting facilitation, all that good stuff. So if that's something that um, sounds interesting to you or your organization could use, please head us up. We have our flyer in the back. We also have our cards. Um, but tomorrow night at 6 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock, 7.30 p.m., we are hosting an open house. So there will be tacos. It's delicious. Um, and we are located, and that will be at um, 111 Goose Alley. So that's behind Main Street and right next to Bunny's. And so you can get the RSVP link at the flyer in the back. Um, and we have one more thing we'd like to tell you about. All right, so between asking if we could share info and today, our um, opportunity to complete a mediation training with us has mostly filled up. So there is, I would say we have like one spot left. Um, we offer free training for folks that would like to become mediators. I know there's a couple of people in the room that have already signed up with us. That info is in the back as well. So I, I think maybe if one more person is interested, we can try to work with you. Thank you. All right, Robbie. I'm here uh, with Healing Invisible Wounds. It's a uh, program to help veterans, families, interested stakeholders for veterans dealing with uh, mental health issues, and that includes the family. Uh, we have a, our third conference coming up on November the 9th at 9 a.m. till 2. Will be a light breakfast and a lunch served. And I have Nicole Massey here as part of my team. We'll also give you some information. So as Robbie mentioned, this is the third part of our conference. The first part was giving a, an overview about mental health issues. Uh, the second conference, we talked uh, more in depth about mental health uh, is issues, depression, uh, substance abuse. The third part now um, is talking about family systems, healthy interventions, and we have at the end uh, bonding activities so it's either for couples or bonding with their children again just to experience each other after you heard uh, a lot of stuff that is generally not positive this is a way to really round everything up um, and be in a safe setting 
uh, with the veterans community. So please bring your spouses, your kids, um, and also learn, especially for family members, how to interact with veterans and structures that might or might not be healthy and how we can change approaches to mental health issues in the veterans community. This will be at the uh, Illinois Training Center in Urbana, again, nine to two. So we have flyers in the back. Thank you. All right, many of you are on. Okay, thank you, Tracy. I didn't bring too much with me because I know you would uh, uh, want us to hurry. But I did want the people here to know that the NAACP Champaign County branch, for the first time in Champaign history, uh, we are hosting both the 87th Illinois State Conference Convention here in Champaign at the uh, Hilton Garden Inn. And also uh, on the 28th, we are having our Freedom Fund Program 2024. Our theme is All In for Racial Justice and Equities. Our speaker for the evening is Dr. Janice C. Wilson, Executive Director of Operation PUSH. Again, this is held on Saturday, the 28th, 2024, at the Hilton Garden Inn, 1501 South Neal Street. You know where it is, and it will be a buffet dinner. It starts from 6 to 9. Also, uh, we will be honoring a number of community members for their public service that they've done in the community. Tickets are $75. Uh, youth under uh, 15 is, is $50. But what I want you to know, too, is this is important. Uh, on Friday, we are having an open forum at Salem Baptist Church, 500 East Park Street. And we are, at that particular time, giving away fruit and vegetable baskets, 350 of them, to anyone who comes through the parking lot, uh, just as we did when we had COVID. Uh, giveaways and protection and, and, and things to uh, protect you from that uh, disease. So we are having a community forum at Salem. And at that forum, we will be welcomed by our mayors and pe different people in the community. In fact, our own uh, Katrina uh, Kendall is going to do a workshop on that uh, Friday as well uh, on health. So we have a number of community workshops going on uh, from criminal justice to education through pol political. We'll have ACLU there working with us uh, on voter. So uh, if you want to know more about this, go to our website at naacpcc.org, and it will tell you more information. But people, please come out and support this. Support the NAACP. It is a state convention. But it has never been here in Champaign before. And so I really want to make a good turnout. In fact, uh, my mother used to tell me, um, when company is coming, it's, it's good for you to be at home. So please come out and be at home when we have this event. All right, thank you so much. And we appreciate your support. Um, I'm, I'm Christine. And I'm with uh, Community Outreach, which we're doing reducing opiate overdoses in the community. Drive through August 30th. Um, in recognition of Overdose Awareness Day at uh, Champaign-Urbana Public Health. So from eight to four, just come in the parking lot. It's to the left of the building. You'll see us out there. Um, if you need any Narcan today, just let me know after the meeting. All right, so let's give Vision to Succeed. Another round of applause. And Rizea, thank you, brother, for coming. Operation Hope students, the Peace Pose, please come see them. All right, everybody, thank you for making it out today. Peace and love to you, and thank you for what you do for our community.